wilderness. It's a vast, mysterious place that has remained untouched by mankind. A place of pure isolation, with clean air, clear water, and a plethora of natural treasures. When we hear the word wilderness, we tend to think about a place hidden away in some of our planet's most remote locations. Before settlers arrived in America, much of the country was a vast wilderness. Trees covered the land, rivers cut through the terrain, and every being followed the ancient laws of nature. It would seem as if exploring such a place is only a fantasy. Many people see wilderness as a thing of the past. However, there are still pieces of untouched land, where natural treasures still survive in the most unlikely of places. This is Boonton, a small town that lies in the heart of northern New Jersey. This place is well known for its rich history, small businesses, and culture. However, it is not well known for its wildlife. Most people are completely unaware of the life forms that take up residence here in Boonton, the hidden wilderness. Hundreds of years ago, Boonton was a much different place. The reservoir did not exist. It was instead a river which ran through the ancient woodlands. These rivers were home to many fish, like the native brook trout. Animals used the river for a source of hydration. For Native Americans, Boonton was a hunting ground, and it is here where they would prey on turkey, whitetails, and elk. Herds of bison may have also occasionally visited this place in search of food. The natives would have had to compete for prey with predators like the wolf and mountain lion. When settlers arrived, land was cleared for farming and building. Around the early 1800s, Creatures like the elk, mountain lion, wolf, and even bison were hunted to near extinction. Today, the only place in the Garden State where these creatures can be found is in a zoo. Named in the honor of Colonial Governor Thomas Boone, Boonton was built along the Rockway River as it is known today. The power from the river was harvested to produce iron. What remains of Boonton's ironworks can still be seen to this day. As with many ancient places, the iron forges have been reclaimed by natural forces. Another example is the Boonton Reservoir. At one point, the reservoir was nothing more than a river. However, as America became more developed, the town of Boonton was created. For a while, this town thrived until the construction of the soon-to-be Boonton Reservoir. The town of Boonton was moved to its current location, leaving the reservoir to be retaken by wildlife. Throughout the decades, life kept adapting to this new, ever-changing world, and Boonton eventually became the wilderness that it is today. Every species here has an incredible adaptation which allows them to survive the various challenges that come with being a Boonton resident. Perhaps the most drastic of these is the weather. Here, animals experience all four seasons, summer, fall, winter, and spring. The sun rises on a new day. A familiar honking call is heard across the frigid waters. The Canada goose is a monogamous species, meaning that they mate for life. Both the male and female have black necks and white cheeks. These geese are flock animals and find refuge from predators in the presence of other geese.
Bootin lies along an ancient path known as the Atlantic Flyway. This north-south flyway is a migration route that has been used by various birds for generations. A bane of many migratory bird species is the bald eagle. Bald eagles are some of the largest birds here in the wilderness. The bald eagle is a symbol of America, representing the strength and freedom of not only this country, but the wilderness in which this bird inhabits. Eagles have incredible eyesight, which enables them to spot prey from miles away. Normally, these eagles would be out hunting for themselves. However, right now, they are much more focused on protecting their nest from predators and finding food for their young. Like the Canada goose, the eagle is a monogamous species and will remain with the same mate for life. Perched on a high branch, the peregrine falcon overlooks his vast domain. Hailing as the fastest animal on the planet, the peregrine weighs in at around 2 to 3 pounds, with a 3.9 foot wingspan. At this size, he is no bigger than a crow. Despite its small size, the falcon is one of the greatest predators of this wilderness, feeding on small mammals, birds, and ducks. During spring, many migratory waterfowl species come and go here, creating a buffet for predators like the falcon. The only problem is that many of these species can be difficult to catch. The muskrat is a semi-aquatic rodent that is akin to the beaver. Sitting on a rock, the muskrat provides the falcon with an opportunity to strike. Unfortunately for the falcon, the ever-busy muskrat retreats into the water in search of food and nesting material. The muskrat can remain underwater for approximately 15 minutes. The falcon must look around for other prey options. Their incredible eyesight allows them to see prey from at least a mile away. Many people know that spring has arrived when they hear the iconic call of the robin. Despite being the sign of spring, many robins do not migrate and will remain here year round. In the early days of spring, the frozen ground keeps the robin's favorite meal locked away. Earthworms will not emerge until the first warm rain of the season. Since they cannot hunt insects, the robins turn to fruit and nuts. A large flock of robins swarms a holly tree, feeding on the sweet berries. These berries will sustain them until the emergence of earthworms. Among the first migratory birds to return here from the south are the double-crested cormorants. Cormorants are a species of aquatic bird that inhabit lakes, rivers, and coastline. During the breeding season, the males can be distinguished by the white crests on their heads. The cormorants have gathered here in the dozens, with reports of up to 105 individuals being seen. They are fish eaters and will dive deep underwater in order to find prey. Unlike other waterfowl, the cormorant's feathers aren't fully waterproof. Because of this, they must exit the water in order to dry out their feathers. Another unusual water bird hunts close by. This is the pie-billed grebe, a 
a species that has the face of a sparrow and the body of a duck. However, the grebe is not closely related to any of these birds. Their closest cousin is the loon, another seldom seen resident here. Like the cormorant, grebes dive for their prey. The grebe's diet consists of insects, crustaceans, and fish. Grebes are more comfortable in the water than any other bird. Sometimes they will even construct floating nests on the surface. On the open water, chaos breaks out amongst the mallards. Their calls can be heard throughout the wilderness. The cause of this ruckus is two mallard drakes fighting over a hen. Mallards will fight with one another for the right to breed. The winner will pass his genes on to future generations of mallards, and the loser will end his bloodline unless he can find another hen. When winter comes to a close, the landscape goes through a drastic change. The once barren trees are coated with green leaves. The warm temperatures have drawn out many reptiles, especially turtles. A young snapping turtle awakens from hibernation. After a long winter, he is hungry and ready to hunt. He heads to the water to search for prey. At this size, he will feed on minnows, worms, crayfish, and anything else that can fit in his beak. He is only about a couple inches in length, and weighs much less than a pound. At this size, he is vulnerable, so he must be elusive. If he is able to survive this dangerous time in his life, he may one day grow into a legend. The largest common snapping turtle on record weighed in at about 86 pounds. During the spring, adult snappers are in the process of mating. Like many turtles, snapping turtles mate in the water. Shallow inlets provide habitat for many organisms, such as aquatic plants. These plants are extremely important, providing shelter for some creatures and food for others, like the Canada goose. The geese who have not laid eggs are free to forage without any parental responsibilities. Here they will use their long necks to reach for food from the bottom. Nearby splashing sounds intrigue the geese. The carp are beginning their spawning season. This is when males and females meet in shallow waters to breed. During this time, the carp are extremely active. Sometimes the carp will breach, just like whales and dolphins. The reason for this fascinating behavior is linked to the fish's gills. Many scientists believe that carp jump in order to clean their gills of dirt and parasites. On a nearby grassy hillside next to the bridge, a new generation has been created. Canada geese can have anywhere from two to nine babies. At this age, the goslings are vulnerable. They cannot yet fly and are quite clumsy on land, making them easy prey for anyone who would want to be a predator. For the next few months, the goslings will have to learn all about survival from their parents. For protection, the goslings follow their mother. However, there are always stragglers. If this little guy hopes to survive his first summer, he must learn to stay close to the flock. 
Strength in numbers is a key survival tactic used by many birds. The diet of the Canada Goose consists of various types of aquatic plants, as well as grass. For a bird as small as a gosling, the world is a very dangerous place. The peregrine falcon sits aside the bridge, feeding on his latest meal. This bird, no matter what species it may have been, was either too slow or too carefree to avoid the falcon's swift attack. We oftentimes view predators as ravenous, cold-blooded killers, but in reality, they are a critical part of every wilderness, keeping the population controlled of many different species. Another grazer is the woodchuck, more commonly known as the groundhog. This large rodent is feeding on as much plant life as possible after his long hibernation. He will eat about a third of his body weight every day. Woodchucks spend much of their time out in the open, so they must be on high alert for predators. When startled, the woodchuck stands up on his hind legs to scan the area. He hears an oncoming threat and retreats. Emerging out of the ground is a red fox kit. This little guy is only about a month old, and this is one of his first times leaving the den. Fox kits are very curious and are fascinated by the wild world around them. Playing teaches these creatures essential survival skills such as hunting. To a small fox, anything can be a toy, from old leftover scraps of food to a passing bee. This fox is still very small, so he cannot venture far from the den on his explorations. But that doesn't seem to bother this little guy, since there are plenty of things to see here. The kit is now very alert. His ears are pricked up. He can hear something coming this way. Thankfully, it's just his mother returning home with dinner, which in this case is a mallard hen she caught by the water. The vixen is on a constant search for prey in order to keep her kit's appetite satisfied. As yet another day comes to an end, the sun slowly crawls behind the horizon, making way for nightfall. In a different part of the forest, a pair of raccoons come out of a hollowed tree. The raccoon is an excellent climber, and is as comfortable in the trees as they are on the ground. These mammals are omnivorous and will eat anything from fruit to crayfish. The raccoon is a common animal here in North America that has benefited from the expansion of mankind. They are extremely adaptable and can survive in a variety of ecosystems. A single raccoon will consume two meals per day. Right now it is breakfast. These raccoons are feeding on whatever they can find in the canopy. Their deceiving, cute looks hide the fact that when provoked, the raccoons can be quite vicious. 
All of a sudden, the raccoons quarrel. Raccoons can be very protective of their territory and food. It seems that this raccoon has stolen the food of its opponent. Raccoons are not a creature to mess with. They have sharp teeth and claws, which can cause severe damage. They are also well-known carriers of rabies. The stronger raccoon is victorious, preserving his feeding spot. The smaller, weaker raccoon must climb down the tree and search for food in a new spot. The raccoon is of great importance to the maintenance of this wilderness. They act as a natural cleanup crew, eating things most species would find unpalatable. The raccoon will also provide prey for owls, hawks, foxes, and coyotes. Deer are perhaps the most common species here. During this time of the year, white-tailed deer are recovering after a harsh winter. An abundance of food helps them regain their lost weight. The bucks and does are divided into their own small groups. The bucks begin regrowing their antlers that they had shed this previous winter. A layer of velvet surrounding the antlers provides nutrients, helping them grow. During this time, the bucks are focused on foraging for food. This will help them grow stronger for the breeding season. Does also spend their spring and summer months searching for food. However, in the spring, they have another responsibility. This fawn was born earlier in the season. He was able to stand 10 minutes after birth and was able to walk after seven hours. The fawn is old enough to explore, however, its mother is always close by, keeping a watchful eye on her baby. Deer are herbivores and eat a variety of plant material, including leaves, twigs, fruits, lichen, fungi, grass, and even the infamous poison ivy. Here, grass is abundant, and makes up a large part of the deer's diet. In a large clearing, the fawn joins his mother and sibling to graze. Like the fox kit, the fawn is ever so curious about his surroundings. Before they could consume solid foods, the fawns relied on their mother's milk to help them grow. While the fawns can survive without milk by 10 weeks of age, many are not fully weaned until about 16 weeks or more. It is now the month of June. The tree branches are clothed with majestic green leaves. Temperatures have risen to an average of 78 degrees. Many birds return from their winter migration. 
the reptiles which have spent their winter underground are now emerging. Sitting as still as a stone, the painted turtle basks in the warm rays of the summer sun. Painted turtles are a common species here in America that thrive in ponds, lakes, and wetlands. This cold-blooded creature warms up before heading out to explore. These turtles are incredibly cautious and will react to even the slightest sign of danger. When a twig snaps in the distance, the turtle swiftly escapes to its underwater sanctuary. The turtle is more at home in the water than on land. Its webbed feet and sharp claws help to navigate the reservoir environment. He can hold his breath for well over 20 minutes. Here he can find shelter and food. In a nearby pool, a plethora of tiny fish can be seen. This small body of water acts as a sanctuary for baby bass, sunfish, catfish, and pickerel. The young largemouth bass looks almost identical to its parents, aside from its size. This predatory fish is one of the most famous game animals in North America. Their torpedo-shaped bodies help them move swiftly throughout their watery domain. These bass can grow to be 15 inches long and weigh more than 10 pounds. At this age, however, the largemouth bass is dwarfed by the sunfish. The red-breasted sunfish is a relative of the bass. Freshwater sunfish are great swimmers and can change direction with ease. The sunfish's diet mainly consists of insects, worms, and small fish. However, they will also scavenge and consume carrion. A dead fish will provide food for this sunfish, as well as its rival, the crayfish. Here, the young fish are safe from turtles and larger fish. However, there are still many other predators. The great blue heron is our largest wading bird, standing at around 3 to 4.5 feet tall. They also have a massive wingspan of about 6 feet, making them appear like flying dinosaurs. The herons are perfectly designed for catching fish. Herons can't swim like the cormorants, so they must hunt in shallow water. Every year, the great blue heron constructs a large nest at the top of trees, made of sticks and branches. Herons will typically nest in groups known as rookeries. Finding the perfect nesting tree can be difficult, so oftentimes, herons will grow territorial once they have found the perfect spot. During the summer, herons share their hunting and nesting grounds with the majestic great egret. The egret is a summer visitor that comes here in large numbers. The white feathers of the egret are not just for looks. They help keep the bird cool in hot weather by reflecting the sun's rays. Like the heron, the egret is an excellent hunter, feeding on fish and frogs. Their long necks and sharp spear-like beaks help them catch prey with ease. The egret has spotted a fish and remains motionless, waiting for the opportunity to strike. Once caught, the small helpless fish is swallowed within seconds.
Feeding near the herons is the majestic mute swan. This is the largest of the waterfowl here, weighing about 25 pounds. They also have a massive wingspan of around 8 feet. Swans have long necks which they use to feed on aquatic vegetation, a popular meal for waterfowl in Bhutan. Each day the swan will eat anywhere from 4 to 8 pounds of vegetation. In most places, swans are usually solitary, however here, they can be seen in large groups. One of the most beautiful sights here in Bhutan is a flock of swans gliding across the water at dawn or dusk. The osprey is a bird of prey whose diet is almost entirely made up of fish. Everything about this aquatic raptor makes them perfectly designed to catch fish. His sharp talons and sandpaper-like feet help him grasp on to slippery fish. Perhaps the greatest feature of the osprey are his eyes, which are incredibly strong, being able to see through the glare on the water. When hunting for fish, this bird soars high, searching for movement. In a nearby pine tree sits an odd hawk-like bird watching the osprey hunt. This is the osprey's larger cousin, a juvenile bald eagle. At this age, he has not yet grown in his iconic white head feathers and appears all black. He is old enough to leave the nest, but is not yet ready to hunt on his own. He patiently waits for his parents to return home, bringing the next meal. During late summer, there are sometimes periods of drought in which no rain falls. This causes the reservoir's water levels to drop. As the water retreats, it leaves behind mud flats. The mud attracts some of Bhutan's shorebirds, including the killdeer. The killdeer is the largest of America's ringed plovers. They prefer open habitats with little vegetation, making Bhutan's mud flats the perfect place. Here, they forage from a variety of invertebrates like worms, beetles, crustaceans, snails, and many others. Killdeer are named after the male's call. Down by the river, an unusual shorebird can be found. This is the spotted sandpiper, America's most widespread shorebird. Unlike their beach-dwelling cousins, spotted sandpipers prefer freshwater habitats like the river. Like killdeer, their diet is made up of a variety of invertebrates. While feeding, the spotted sandpiper performs an unusual behavior known as teetering, which is the bobbing of the tail. The purpose of teetering is unknown. However, it does share this trait with another one of Bhutan's residents, the Eastern Phoebe. This behavior has earned the spotted sandpiper nicknames like teeter snipe, jerk bird, and tip tail. Whitetails are fairly social creatures and spend a considerable amount of time around one another. Whitetails will groom each other in order to remove parasites as well as forming or maintaining bonds. In most cases, the grooming process starts by the dominant deer. The whitetail bucks must now prepare for the most important time in their lives. The thick layer of velvet that has surrounded their antlers for the past summer provides them with nutrients. 
Once there is a change in the wind, the bucks develop a literal itch, which causes them to rub against tree trunks and branches. This older buck has just completely shed his velvet, revealing a sharp, majestic, eight-point rack. The process of shedding velvet can take as long as 48 hours. Whitetails love to travel and explore new areas in order to find food or a mate. For the most part, the deer will travel by land. However, in areas like Bhutan, where water cuts through the landscape, the deer must take an alternate route. This large buck has taken to the water in order to reach the other side of the reservoir where there are more opportunities. Believe it or not, the whitetail is actually a decent swimmer. By crossing the reservoir, this buck has swam roughly 300 feet without stopping. Once he makes it to the other side, the buck is exhausted, barely able to walk. For now, he must rest and regain his lost strength. Further inland, a red-tailed hawk is perched on an old telephone pole. The red tail is another raptor that thrives here. This species can be identified by its iconic reddish brown tail. The red tail is a famous yet not well known movie star. Their call has been used in many films, especially westerns. The red tail has strong eyesight, which helps them spot prey from miles away. Like all birds, the hawk must maintain his feathers by preening them. In order to fly, the hawk must clear his feathers of dust and other particles. Once he is fully clean, the red tail will take off. Hawks are notorious for soaring above open areas in search of prey. From a hundred feet away, the hawk spots an unaware rabbit. The cottontail rabbit is perhaps the most adorable of the creatures here in Bhutan. They feed on grasses and clover and are most active at dawn and dusk. Cottontails frequently fall prey to both hawks and foxes, so they must constantly be on alert. These rabbits have almost 360 degree vision due to the fact that their eyes are situated on the sides of their head. They also have incredible hearing. Those large ears are not for display, but rather to help them detect the presence of any creature. If a rabbit is startled, it will perk up its ears and look all around. It will also twitch its nose, seeing if there are any unfamiliar smells in the area. The rabbit runs for cover, in this case, a small bush where the hawk cannot get to him. Cottontails are naturally timid and shy, which helps them out in the long run. The lifespan of a cottontail is very short and rarely exceeds two years in the wild. Luckily for this rabbit, he has evaded the ravenous hawk. By surviving the attack from this hawk, he may go on to father future generations of cottontail. For now, the rabbit will rest, regaining his lost energy. Even though he has lost the rabbit, the hawk still has a successful hunt. Here in the wilderness, death is of great significance. When a plant or animal perishes, it provides food for countless other species. 
Take this deer mouse. Its corpse provides food for ants, beetles, and many others, including the shrew. The shrew is a small, mole-like creature that leads a very secretive life. This species is the masked shrew, which is one of America's smallest mammals, weighing about 0.15 ounces. Despite their small size, they are voracious predators and will feed on anything they can find. They have extremely high metabolism, which is the reason they move so quickly. Because of this, they must eat every three hours in order to live. Their heart beats about 1,000 times per minute. To get a better understanding of this, the human heart only beats about 100 times per minute. This speedy little creature only lives for a year or so before it burns out and dies. While his time here is short, the shrew plays a critical role in this ecosystem, acting as an apex predator of the leaf litter and also as a scavenger. He will feed on worms, spiders, and sometimes even salamanders. Salamanders are a type of amphibian, typically mistaken for lizards. There are many species in North America, but the most common is the red-backed. Red-backed salamanders inhabit deciduous forests across the eastern United States. This salamander requires moist places to live, like this decaying log. One thing that makes them unique is the fact that they are lungless. Because they lack lungs, these creatures must breathe through their skin, making them extremely sensitive to their surroundings. The redback has many defensive capabilities and is fully prepared if encountered by a predator. Like most salamanders, they can drop their tails at will. This is no problem, however, because they can always grow a new one. The salamander, while tiny, is a critical part of the forest ecosystem. They prey on insects that, left unchecked, will decimate local plant and fungi populations. These small amphibians are also an important prey item for many other creatures, like the raccoon. Salamanders are keystone members of the forest, and if they were to go extinct, this whole ecosystem could collapse. Deep in the forest, a loud tapping sound is heard. Bootin is home to many woodpeckers, such as the downy, hairy, red-bellied, flicker, and the largest, the pileated. Pileated woodpeckers are the largest woodpeckers in all of North America, growing to be 15 inches in length with a 29-inch wingspan. Pileated, like all woodpeckers, construct their nests by hollowing out a tree. This male woodpecker peeks his head out from the nest. He takes flight, flying to a tree where he will find food. The woodpecker prefers to forage on dead or dying trees that are filled with grubs and their favorite delicacy, the carpenter ant. This woodpecker has found a healthy tree that has just been plagued with grubs. In order to find these bugs, the woodpecker must use a form of echolocation. By pecking on the outside of the tree, he disturbs the bugs within. After each tap, he listens, carefully, until he pinpoints the exact location of the grub. He now pecks deep into the tree and retrieves his meal. Many people believe that by doing this, woodpeckers kill the trees. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. Woodpeckers are saviors of the forest, removing harmful parasitic insects from trees, saving them from dying. Without woodpeckers, the forests would be decimated. The wilderness of Bhutan borders the homes of us human beings. Here, mankind and wildlife intermingle. In many suburban areas, wildlife is welcomed. People will leave out food, 
water, and shelter in order to attract many species. In a nesting box created for birds, a group of flying squirrels has taken up residence. The flying squirrel is just as common as their famous cousin the gray squirrel, however, they are seldom seen due to their nocturnal lifestyle. Right now, the squirrels are asleep and are comfortable in their den made of leaves, twigs, and clumps of fur. With the sun gone and the moon taking its place, the little squirrels emerge from their den. Like the diurnal gray squirrels, flying squirrels are incredible climbers and can swiftly scale trees. They eat a variety of fruits, nuts, seeds, and even insects. Despite their name, Flying Squirrel, these rodents cannot fly. Instead, they will use their long patches of skin to glide from tree to tree. During the month of October, Bhutan begins to undergo a dramatic change. Summer is over, it is now autumn. The days begin to grow shorter, causing temperatures to drop. The leaves of deciduous trees begin to change from green to varied shades of red, orange, and yellow. The landscape is now a picturesque scene that looks straight out of a painting. Autumn is a busy time of year for the wildlife of Bhutan. They must all prepare for the upcoming winter. This gray squirrel forages for acorns, a stable food source for many creatures during this time. The squirrel will eat some now, but the rest he will store for later. During these months, the squirrel has only one goal, which is to find as much food as possible. Gray squirrels are not shy creatures and will feed alongside songbirds and whitetails. The deer will replace its reddish-brown summer coat with a more seasonally appropriate gray winter coat. The winter coat helps keep the deer warm and also provides them with camouflage for the changing landscape. The bucks are usually the first to make this transformation. Bucks have unique antlers that are altered from genetics or sometimes injuries. This small fawn is known as a button buck. His antlers are not fully grown and he is not sexually mature. He will spend the rut searching for food such as acorns. This slightly older buck has just grown in his antlers. This is known as a spike buck. This buck will most likely not pursue any does this season since he does not have the antlers nor the strength to compete with mature bucks. Over time he will grow and his antlers will branch out. This mature buck has an unusual rack. One of his antlers has four points, while the other one looks to be a spike. This oddity may have been caused by an injury at the base of the antler. Despite this strange disability, this buck is ready to breed. His lips are curled, which helps him take in more scents. He is searching for estrus, which is the urine of a doe, that is ready to breed. Spiders are extremely active during October. The gray walled jumping spider is a common species here. It receives its name from its incredible ability to jump far to escape predators and catch prey.
Here at the reservoir bridge, the streetlights attract hundreds of insects, creating a buffet for spiders. The spiders here do not hunt their prey, they instead construct elegant webs that they will use to trap insects that are unfortunate enough to get caught. Once the insect is trapped, he will receive a paralyzing, venomous bite and be wrapped up in a ball of silk. The spider will not eat this insect at the moment, but save it for later. The sun begins to rise above the horizon. Frost, rather than dew, covers the ground. The birds begin to sing, and every creature is active. The deer herd proceeds with the rut, however, they are a buck short. The buck with the unusual rack has perished. The cause of death is unknown. Perhaps it was illness, injury, or predators. Life in this wilderness can be rough and cruel. However, each death here has a purpose. This deer will provide food for coyotes, foxes, and vultures. As his body decomposes, he will go back into the earth as a natural fertilizer helping new trees grow, which will feed future generations of whitetail. As gruesome as death may seem, it is a critical aspect to the survival of any wilderness. A group of gray squirrels congregate in a small section of woods. January is the breeding season for the squirrel. During this time, multiple females will be in estrus, meaning that they are ready to breed. As with most animals, the female squirrel will only mate with the most fit individual in order to produce healthy offspring. The female will be in estrus for only a few hours, so the males must be quick. She will run around the forest, taking the males on a mating chase. The fastest male will receive the right to spread his genes. The breeding process is short, and oftentimes only lasts a minute or so. Squirrels do not mate for life, and when the breeding process is finished, they will go their separate ways. The now uninterested females will have to spend these next few days warding off curious males. Nearby, a hooded merganser drake glides across the water. He is a carnivorous duck that feeds on fish. The bill of this bird is serrated, which helps him hold slippery fish. As the drake is searching for prey, something beautiful happens. The first flakes of snow fall upon the earth. Winter has officially begun.
In the forest, snow covers the land. Tracks of various creatures tell stories of life during the winter. Fox tracks are present throughout the woods. Now grown up, the red fox is out searching for prey. His luxurious winter coat keeps him warm. The fox is very agile, being able to travel this rugged landscape with ease. This is his first year alone, and if he is to make it through the winter, he must learn to adapt to all of the challenges that this wilderness has to offer. The whitetail's breeding season is coming to a close. Bucks begin frantically searching for any last-minute does. This buck has found himself a group of does thriving in a secluded pine forest. In the winter, the deer must find food, which can be difficult in such harsh conditions. The deer will consume a variety of twigs, stems, berries, and other available plant life. This doe has suffered a leg injury. The cause is unknown. Perhaps it could be from a coyote, or maybe an overly aggressive buck. Whatever the cause, this injury could prove lethal, especially during these dark, cold months. When winter arrives, so do many new species of waterfowl Various ducks and geese have come here from northern states where the lakes have frozen over. Believe it or not, there are more waterfowl species here in the winter than in the summer. Some of the species that have come here are the common mergansers, ringneck ducks, hooded mergansers, greenwing teal, and bufflehead. Buffleheads are a species of sea duck that thrive in cold waters. One location where buffleheads frequent is a small park called Gracelord. This location is rich in freshwater mollusks and aquatic plants, which make up the diet of the bufflehead. When it comes to feeding, buffleheads differ from mallards. Mallards are known as dabbling ducks, which feed close to the surface. However, buffleheads are diving ducks, feeding much deeper underwater. Buffleheads can dive of depths about 3 to 14 feet. This species is fairly small, reaching 13 to 16 inches in length and a wingspan of 24 inches. In open water, buffleheads begin their mating season. The drakes are very protective of their hens. This bufflehead pair is disrupted by an intruding drake this unwelcome visitor starts swimming too close to the hen. Bobbing of the head is a common courtship display, however in this instance, it is a warning sign to the intruding drake. After the warning, he charges at the trespasser, scaring him away from his mate. The small, shallow inlet where the herons once fed is almost completely frozen over. Here, a couple of green-winged teal search for food. Like the mallard, they are dabblers which feed primarily on vegetation. The male can be recognized by the green mask on his head and the iridescent patch of feathers on the side of his wings. Those patches usually appear green, however, in the right lighting, they transform into various hues of blue and purple. With temperatures dropping fast, 
the surface layer of the reservoir begins to transform into ice. As they wait for the ice of the reservoir to melt, many waterfowl species flee to the Rockaway River. Here they will find a calm pool in which they will feed and remain here until temperatures rise. Even with the reservoir completely frozen over, there is still one bird that remains, the ring-billed gull. The ringbills gather here in the hundreds. Ringbills, like most gulls, are scavengers and will feed on almost anything they can find. It is now March, and the days are beginning to grow longer and warmer. The thick layers of ice and snow begin to thaw. Spring is on the horizon, restarting the four-season cycle. Here in Bhutan, the species that thrive are equipped with unique survival skills, allowing them to overcome incredible odds, from freezing winters to habitat destruction and being on the verge of extinction. These animals have stood the test of time. It's hard to fathom what this land would have looked like long ago when elk and wolves roamed the land. While those species may be gone, many others have filled the void, taking their place in this wilderness. Despite the vast cities and man-made structures, America is still a truly wild land. Bhutan is living proof of this. This place is not far away from civilization in the deep country. In fact, it's only an hour away from New York City. Across the country, there are many places like Bhutan, where wild animals thrive in close proximity to mankind. Many believe that you have to travel far and wide to find wildlife like it was years ago. But in reality, wild animals can be found anywhere, perhaps closer to your home than you may expect. In order for these places to remain wild, we must preserve them and keep them safe from pollution and habitat destruction. It's also important to respect the wilderness areas and to never leave behind litter. This can damage the environment and cause harm to many species. By protecting wilderness areas, no matter how big or small, we can ensure that creatures like the fox, falcon, deer, snapping turtle, and shrew can thrive for generations. Here in Bhutan, the hidden wilderness. <laughs>